Right, so today we are testing the RX 4070 Ti in the Widget 3 Next Gen. You can have a look at the top left hand corner there. We've got uh, all our performance metrics there. You, you'll see that we've got a 12700K CPU paired with DDR4 3600 megahertz uh, CL18 memory. And uh, the GPU that I'm using is from Galax. It's the ST1 Click OC whatever model. So it's a very entry level model. It was the cheapest one that I could find. Uh, but I always live by the rule by the cheapest that you can because the GPUs are pretty much the same. Uh, the build quality differs a bit and the fan speeds, uh, the temperatures, etc. So you'll see there that my fan speed is uh, locked at about 30% uh, and that is because it does become a bit noisy above that. All right, so we'll be testing at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Uh, this is one of the more demanding errors that I could find. Let me just uh, open up my map here. Uh, don't know if you know where this is, but uh, I don't either. All right, so uh, this is on the ultra preset, uh, no ray tracing, no uh, DLSS and no frame generation. Let's just uh, reset our numbers there. I'm just going to run around a bit uh, at uh, 1080p to get a baseline. You shouldn't really be using this GPU at uh, 1080p, but you can see here in The Witcher, we are not actually uh, very much CPU bound. Uh, the GPU usage is uh, sitting above 95% uh, most of the time. So that means that we are GPU bound. Uh, I wasn't really planning on fighting because um, it's not really my strong suit fighting with the keyboard and mouse. I usually play this with the controller, but uh, all right, so here we go. I have no idea how to cast spells with the keyboard and mouse, um, so if I do die, that's just uh, the way it goes. All right, so we didn't die, and uh, we got an average of 90 frames per second. 1% uh, lows are sitting at 70, and our 0.1% lows are sitting at an extremely high 12. All right, so I'm just going to enable ray tracing just so you can see what the performance set is like, and then we'll just move on to DLSS and frame generation all at the same time. So I'm just going to enable the RT Ultra preset there. You'll see everything is now uh, set to quality. Everything on here is set to Ultra Plus. Uh, I've got NVIDIA Hairworks uh, set to off because I just think it's pointless and motion blur is off as well. All right, so we'll just uh, enable uh, DLSS uh, quality here and uh, let's see what the performance is like. All right, let's just reset our numbers there. And uh, as you can see, we dropped down from 90 frames per second to around 60 frames per second. Uh, that's a pretty big loss just by enabling a ray tracing. But uh, remember, we did enable uh, DLSS quality as well. We are dipping below 60 frames per second at times even. And uh, this is at uh, 1080p. This game is uh, terribly optimized. Now, the funny thing about this is it uses the same engine as uh, Cyberpunk, which is Red Engine 4. And uh, Cyberpunk actually performs uh, quite a lot better. I just think that's extremely ironic because uh, Cyberpunk... Uh, was heavily criticized uh, for its performance issues. All right, so uh, an average of 60 frames per second, 1% lows are sitting at 43 and 0.1% lows are sitting at 38. Now let's just enable a frame generation. So you'll notice that when you enable frame generation, uh, NVIDIA Reflex uh, low latency is uh, grayed out, so it means it's uh, enabled by default and now you can't uh, enable a V-Sync. All right, so let's just reset our numbers there and uh, our frame rate almost uh, doubled. Uh, we went from 60 to 110 frames per second, uh, which is quite a big jump. Now, there's a lot of people that uh, don't uh, enjoy frame generation. I'm not sure if those uh, people actually tried frame generation and they just didn't like it or whether they just made up their mind without uh, testing it. If you are critical of it without having tested it, I urge you to try and test it. I, I guarantee you it's uh, definitely uh, worth it. It's a uh, brilliant technology when it's uh, implemented properly. And uh, in The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk, uh, even Spider-Man, Mark's Flight Simulator, uh, all of them uh, make good use of DLSS 3 or frame generation. And you can see that, that our uh, stuttering has also increased. Uh, so the, this actually helps when you are CPU bound or GPU bound. All right, so if you do want a uh, high refresh rate experience uh, at 1080p with the ray tracing on Ultra, then uh, DLSS quality and frame generation is the way to go. Because now we've got an average of uh, 110 frames per second. Our 1% lows are sitting at 92 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 86. Now I'll do more thorough testing at uh, 1440p and 4K. Uh, as I said, I just wanted to use 1080p as a baseline number.
All right, we're now at uh, 14.40p. As you can see, yeah, we've got uh, frame generation disabled. I'm still using the RT Ultra preset. All I did was just uh, disable ray tracing. Uh, it's just so that everything over here is still set to Ultra Plus, just to keep everything consistent. All right, and as you can see, we are running at about uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, not sure if it'll be a constant 60, whether we'll drop below it. Um, I have uh, seen certain places where it uh, did. Not sure if it'll do it, yeah. But now you can see how demanding this game actually is. Uh, this is at uh, 1440p. Sure, it's Ultra Plus uh, preset and uh, no ray tracing, no DLSS, no nothing. And uh, we are basically managing 60 frames per second. I think it's not ideal. Sure probably play on the high preset uh, if you want uh, some higher frame rates but uh, to be able to only get 60 frames per second with the 4070 Ti uh, it's uh, a little bit disappointing uh, I mean it's not the GPU's fault uh, this game is just uh, terribly optimized I am glad to to notice that the stuttering has improved quite a bit since my previous videos about uh, a month or two ago but at least that's good all right so uh, at uh, 1440p native no ray tracing we had an average of 65 frames per second our 1% lows were sitting at 53 and our 0.1% lows at 44 all right so I'm just going to enable ray tracing on this same preset as we had previously so all i'm going to do is just enable rt ultra the rest of the settings are still the same you'll see motion blur is still turned off and everything is still set to ultra plus all right uh brace yourself it's going to reset our numbers here and uh, now our frame rate basically halved uh, we are now getting in the mid 30s uh, it's a uh, constant 30 frames per second experience um so if you are looking for a, a ps4 or a xbox one console like experience then uh, these settings are definitely for you now as i said uh, in my previous videos uh, the witcher is actually playable at 30 frames per second i would just not prefer to play it at 30 frames per second uh, i i do have a 165 hertz monitor and it would be ideal if i could actually get close to that uh, refresh rate so um definitely not a very good experience this uh playable but uh not uh, preferable uh we had an average of uh, 35 frames per second Shh, i'm talking uh one percent lows of uh, 29 and a 0.1 percent lows of 21. Now i'm just going to enable uh, dlss quality and uh, see what happens all right we are now just using dlss quality the rest of the settings are still exactly the same let's see if we can hit 60 uh and uh right off the bat i'm gonna tell you that uh, we won't be able to all right, uh, this is definitely still not uh, close to 60 frames per second. So at 1440p with the ray tracing ultra preset on uh, DLSS quality, we had an average of 48 frames per second. Our 1% lows are sitting at 37 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 24. Now I'm just going to enable frame generation. All right, so I'm just enabling uh, frame generation and uh, let's go back there. You'll see the frame time graph uh, get a little bit thicker. It's no longer just uh, looking like a single line. But uh, now you can see that we are getting around uh, 80 frames per second. So uh, if you do want a 60 plus experience uh, at 1440p with the R2 Ultra preset, then unfortunately you're going to have to use a DLSS quality along with the frame generation. I'm just going to do one more test with DLSS disabled or DLSS super resolution disabled. There's a difference. Uh, DLSS 2 or whatever it's called, uh, that's a DLSS uh, super resolution and uh, DLSS 3 is called uh, frame generation. You can uh, toggle them independently in most games I've seen. So uh, in this game you can. So I will test it without uh, super resolution, meaning that we'll be testing at 1440p native just with frame generation enabled. But uh, you can see that uh, our frame time graph is actually uh, pretty smooth. That there's not a lot of uh, stuttering going on. Uh, our 0.1% lows are sitting at 69 frames per second. Now I know it's inserting fake frames. Uh, this is not uh, true performance, uh, quotation marks. But it's extremely difficult to tell the difference. I mean, sure, we're getting a, a much higher frame rate. Uh, that's one way you could uh, tell the difference. And uh, the input latency does not uh, really improve by uh, increasing the frame rate 
as it uh, normally does but that's why usually you'll enable DLSS quality or balance the whatever resolution you're playing at and whatever your target uh, frame rate is uh, just to boost the frame rate and get the latency the input latency down a bit and uh, then you enable frame generation and it's not as noticeable all right so at uh, 1440p with uh, DLSS quality and frame generation with R2 Ultra preset we had an average of 79 frames per second our 1% lows are sitting at 70 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 68 I'd say that's a pretty big improvement I'm just going to disable uh, super resolution and only leave frame generation enabled so we'll go back to TAAU and uh, then you'll see that uh, we can still leave frame generation enabled right let's uh, see what happens here uh, actually I haven't tested it like this all right so we are getting around 60 frames per second so it's a bit better than just enabling uh, DLSS quality because uh, when we enable DLSS quality without frame generation we were stuck in the 50s and uh, with only frame generation enabled we are getting around 60 frames per second now the problem is now the late the input latency is is a bit higher and it is noticeable that's because our base frame rate is uh, probably around 30 frames per second as we saw earlier and now the fake frames with the DLSS frame generation uh, become more noticeable but only in the input latency the graphics still look uh, pretty good the hard elements uh, everything seems to be working quite fine uh, sure if you are going to go pixel peeping you'll probably notice a difference but uh, just playing the game I honestly can't tell all right so uh, there we have it if you actually want to uh, are much closer to a 60 frames per second experience then don't enable DLSS quality just enable DLSS frame generation uh, you'll get 60 most of the time but you have to sit with a little bit of a higher input latency all right let's see what happens at 4k all right we're now at 4k still on the RT ultra preset just with ray tracing disabled uh, 4k with uh, no frame generation I uh, just want to make sure that uh, DLSS yeah sure we are using TAAU right uh, let's see what happens and uh, we are getting around 30 frames per second now the game looks uh, absolutely gorgeous but uh, 30 frames per second uh, it's probably not worth it I seem to have lost Roach all right, so I've been running around for a little while, haven't found any new enemies, but it doesn't really matter. We've managed to capture all the metrics that we want. Our average frame rate is sitting at uh, 37 frames per second. Our 1% lows are sitting at 31, and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 28. Now, those numbers are pretty close to each other, which means that it was a pretty consistent experience, but just not a preferable one. All right, let's see what DLSS uh, Super Resolution can do for us here. All right, we're gonna start off with the DLSS uh, quality preset. Uh, everything else is still the same, right? tracing is off and uh, everything else is set to ultra plus all right let's see if we can get uh, 60 frames per second i highly doubt it all right let's just reset the numbers here again and uh, you can see we are getting around 50 frames per second now it's not uh, terrible but uh, technically we are internally rendering at 1440p so it's not true 4k sure it looks a bit better than just 1440p the anti-aliasing of dlss is a uh, quite okay in this game actually better than TAAU in my opinion anyway but uh, we are still not getting 60 frames per second not sure we can just lower some of the presets we can go to high or even medium and we should be able to to achieve it but uh, I mean, for this video, I just wanted to see how far we can actually push this uh, GPU on the maximum settings and then see how far we can actually push the frame rate as well. All right, so at uh, 4K with the uh, DLSS quality, we had an average of 50 frames per second. Our 1% lows are sitting at 41 and our 0.1% lows are sitting at 36. And I'm just going to enable DLSS frame generation. All right, so we are on uh, DLSS quality with uh, frame generation enabled and uh, we did not really see that big a jump. Uh, yeah, sure, we went from 50 frames per second to around 70 frames per second. Number wise, it's not that uh, high, but percent wise it's actually quite a big jump now we can actually play this game at uh, a steady 60 frames per second uh, the performance is very consistent actually just look at the frame time graph there very uh, smooth very flat and the input latency is uh, acceptable especially for a game like uh, the witcher 3 you're not too worried about uh, high input latency uh, as long as it's just not uh, terrible 
but uh, for me even with the keyboard and mouse uh, at these settings it's definitely still pretty good all right so that was at uh, 4k on the rt ultra preset without ray tracing dlss quality and frame generation enabled we had an average of uh, 69 frames per second our one percent laser sitting at 59 and 0.1 percent laser sitting at 51. now let's see what happens when we start enabling a ray tracing right i'm going to leave all the other settings as is uh, dlss set to quality and uh, everything else still on ultra plus so uh, i'm not sure this gpu would be able to handle it but uh, we gotta give it a shot all right let's just reset the numbers and you can see that that, that frame time graph is pretty thick it's uh, pretty consistent but no longer the single line you used to see uh, that's just what uh, frame generation does to the reporting of uh, rtss so we are unfortunately unable to reach 60 frames per second with the RT Ultra preset, even with frame generation and DLSS quality. I think if we drop down to DLSS uh, balanced, we should be able to, to get it. But that's just once again, testament to how demanding this game's ray tracing implementation actually is. Uh, technically, I think it's terrible, but uh, that's just my opinion. All right, let's see what happens if we drop down to the balanced uh, DLSS setting. Right, we're now just using DLSS uh, balanced, and uh, I don't think we'll be able to hit 60 frames per second, but uh, let's see. Mm, we didn't really gain that much, right? We gained like 10 frames per second. Uh, I think we might be hitting a, a GPU limitation here. Uh, we are very close to that uh, VRAM limit. Uh, not saying we are hitting that, but I have seen that. Uh, for this GPU, especially with the 192-bit uh, memory bus, it's not really as effective at uh, 4K, even with frame generation and uh, DLSS, etc. I do have to crank down the visual settings a bit uh, just to get a playable experience at 4K. Uh, that's the true in most games when I start enabling ray tracing. All right, so uh, DLSS balanced uh, didn't do it for us. Let's see if uh, DLSS performance can do something. All right, we're now on DLSS performance, and uh, let's just reset our numbers here. And... Uh, Still not. We we gained. Uh, there we go. Uh, it might have just taken some time, but uh, let's just reset the numbers. Now it seems like we are almost getting 60 frames per second. Uh, and inside the the woods, where the foliage is uh, pretty dense, um, we are dropping below 60 frames per second. Uh, that's definitely not ideal, especially for an $800 MSRP uh, GPU. Uh, sure, that's not real street price, but uh, that's pretty much what I paid for it. All right, so uh, we're not able to maintain a steady 60 frames per second, uh, even with DLSS balanced and uh, frame generation enabled. So I'm just going to uh, cut down on the visual quality a bit. Uh, let's try on the high preset, just with the ray tracing enabled with the same DLSS settings and see what happens. So I'm just going to enable the high preset here, and then we'll enable ray tracing. Uh, we'll enable all the settings. We'll still go to the quality for global illumination. DLSS is set to performance, and uh, if we go here, then frame generation is still enabled. All right, so let's see if that makes a, a difference. And uh, it seems that we gained around uh, 10 to 15 percent. All right, um, this is actually uh, definitely more acceptable. I don't think we will drop down below 60 frames per second uh, too often. You might still uh, in heavily populated uh, cities or areas, but uh, so far in the wilds, it seems to hold up pretty nicely. Now there's a reason why NVIDIA actually advertises this card as a, uh, I keep on referring to the GPU as a card, it's a graphic card, a GPU, whatever. Uh, there's a reason why NVIDIA actually tries to sell it as a 1440p GPU and that is because of the limited amount of uh, VRAM as well as the limited memory bus. So you're getting a 192 bit bus and only 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Now I've seen in uh, recent games like Hogwarts Legacy where we actually run out of VRAM at 12 gigabytes. All right, so at 4K on the high preset with the uh, ray tracing enabled, uh, DLSS set to performance and uh, frame generation enabled, we managed to get a solid uh, 69 frames per second average. 1% lows are sitting at 61 and 0.1% lows are sitting at 60. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.